Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Ask For Me, My House. I'm Elena. And I'm Jordan. It feels a little weird to be back, but we are so excited. Feels good. I'm it excited. Does. It, I, like missed, a, I missed it. not like, weird. Like, it felt weird coming and, like, setting up the studio. It, like, my nasty coffee was still here <sighs> from a month ago. Like, yeah. it was just, I'm excited, though. Um, we're going to do a Q&A today. I specifically didn't want to know the questions beforehand, so I can just kind of, like, just off the cuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I did preview them, but I didn't really have a chance to like formulate a, a really complex response, but just enough to kind of pre screen because some of them, y'all are a little wild, but <laughs> it's all good. Um, we'll, well, we'll start off a little spicy. Oh. So, first question How's the SEGS, S E G G S, how's the SEGS life with three babies? Spill the tea. Why do people say it like that? Can't you just say sex? Why? Do, like, when did that thing start? I think it's like for a, the longest time I did not understand. I think it's a understand. joke about like how people pronounce it, or with maybe like the rise of TikTok, you can't put S E X in your maybe it like hmm. does something weird with the algorithm. Um, for the longest time, I was like, "What are these people saying?" I'm not a TikToker. I'm, it's, I'm too old. old for that. But I think I, that's kind of my hunch is that's why people do that. And now it's kind of like a joke. I don't think they they actually mean that, but. Mm-hmm. What would you say, honey? I think it's fire. Oh, it's great. It gets better with kids. <laughs> Every swear, kid you have, you have. I, it, no, I don't. I think you have to be intentional. And I feel like this year has been, the last like year and a half, I feel like has been really transformative for us because we've intentionally, we were okay with our marriage, but we really wanted to have a thriving marriage instead of like an okay marriage. Because I feel like everyone can have an okay marriage, but are you having a thriving marriage that like makes the enemy shake at the sound of your guys's name together like do you have a like is your marriage threatening to the enemy because if not then let's get on it so for us I think it was so pivotal once we really decided that we wanted to be more intentional about date night and spending time together and communicating together and like modeling for our kids what a marriage would look like and I feel like being more intimate and just being more intentional about that time has really just overflowed from that and it's been great. I would say our sex life now is the best that it's been even before we had kids. Um, and just like being married longer, you understand each other more, you're more communi you communicate more, you're more comfortable. I feel like it gets better with yeah. time. I no, I, I think it's definitely something you practice, right? Like you're <laughs> like anything, you know? Like yeah. Your wedding night is not gonna be the same as five or six years in mm -hmm. so there's certainly like a dare i say learning curve to it you know mm -hmm. but um all that to say i do think that sometimes with you know kids and all that there's hormones you have to navigate and um yeah. you know don't let that discourage either one of you mm -hmm. um with like postpartum stuff or yeah. whatever like there's a lot of changes going on so just be aware mm -hmm. of that and be sensitive and mindful of it mm -hmm. and um, yeah, that's kind of, kind of the, uh, the best way I think to go about it and just have fun, like mm -hmm. learning your spouse and, mm -hmm. and exploring. Yeah. So. But yeah, I think that's a quick disclaimer before we go on, when we do these Q and A's, we don't want it to seem like Melania and Jordan are the all wise sages. We're literally just like giving you some, it's like a conversation here, even yeah. though it's one sided, but <laughs> we get to like hear questions that you guys want to ask us and we yeah. get to give you our answer. I mean, so I would be curious. No means, yeah. I'd want to know, like, if I'm going to have kids, if our sex life is going to be ruined. Like, I think it's just a genuine question that people have. Yeah. I think that's just a lot of lies told by the society yeah. and mm -hmm. the world is, you know, you, the second you get married or the second you have kids, like your best years of sexual activity are over and it couldn't be farther from the truth. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just kind of know those things going in. But... <laughs> this one, too, we should have led into it. Um, we should have led with this one, I mean, is mm -hmm. what have y'all been up to? Man, what haven't we been up to is the question. It has been a nice, refreshing month. I did post a video last week that I kind of share a lot of that happened. Um, I, 
it was really nice. It was really refreshing. I was understimulated a lot of the time. Like sometimes I would tell Jordan, I was like, I'm going crazy. Like I feel like I'm so. <laughs> She's like, I miss working. <laughs> I yeah. It will. Well, I was still working, but not to the capacity that I normally do. And like the work I was doing was different. So like my creativity outlet wasn't there. And so it was nice to be able to take the creativity that I had and pour it into something else, like sourdough and like making bagels. That mm. has been a lot of fun. Melana is the sourdough bagel like. I've like Queen nailed now. it, She's, you guys. She just made it every day for about a week straight, <laughs> just refining and perfecting first, it. The first one, you guys, it was so funny. It was horrible. It was disgusting. It didn't rise. The bagels, like when you boiled them, it sank to the bottom. And the poor kids, they like both took a bite. And Alethe was like, this is disgusting. I thought it was fine. It No, you're so generous. Funny. It was gross. I it, actually like, didn't mind it. It was doughy. It like didn't, like you could it was gross second time i made it, it was perfect and then since then it's been like <laughs> they've been okay i've like finally picked up but that was something that i learned how to do um i spent so much time with the kids so much time outside so much time with you so much time just sitting there mm -hmm. you know just being like, present and yeah just not, like literally sitting nothing else competing for your attention yeah and just like being mm -hmm. but in the best way yeah um i've been up to kind of a lot of well, the same your life stuff. didn't really change but <laughs> yeah but I we're, we're going to get into some of the people ask some other questions that I think are perfect segues to some other things. But we got some irons in the fire, let's just say, as far as like things that Milan and I have been working on, little projects here and there. So mm -hmm. definitely keep an eye out for that. More information to come very soon in the coming like days and weeks. But yeah, we're really excited to be uh, sharing some more um, information with you guys mm -hmm. on that. But I what know. else have we been up to? We've been um, traveling. Oh, we went, yeah, Jordan and I went on our first little trip, um, just the two of us. It was a vision planning, like, little couple getaway. It was, like, a three-day trip. Um, that was really nice. It was really hard because it was my first time leaving Evangeline. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's hard leaving the older ones, too, but it was my first time leaving her, um, and that meant that th that was, like, the end of our breastfeeding journey, too, um, because I did not want to have to pump. <laughs> yeah. Love her just don't like the machine i genuinely like really do not like it so um to me going on that trip meant that that would be the end of it so i my, i only got a clogged duct for like a couple of days and it was like not even mm -hmm. it was fine so um she had already been on formula for at least like what a month yeah two months now at this point so it wasn't yeah, like co like co yeah it kinda, yeah it kind of had already been tapering so that was like the end of that so it's very bittersweet but it was really nice to be able to connect with jordan and i kept saying i was like i feel like this is what it's going to be like to be retired and like <laughs> be <laughs> empty nesters like i feel like that gave us an opportunity to see what like life would be like and i feel like for me that trip really implemented how important it is for us to spend time together and really make sure that we genuinely love and understand each other and don't let like uh, the busyness of raising kids get into the way of that because I feel like if you're parents and you're just go, go, go and you're not intentional about that, if you go on a trip to the two of us, I feel like it would be a little bit awkward if you're, you know, yeah. you'd be like, uh, you would have a lot of catching up to do. So I feel like we were able to really enjoy and just, yeah, we had a good yeah, time. You never want your kids to be a wedge dividing you and your spouse. You always want them to be an asset to fortify what's already been there in your relationship with your spouse so i really thought it was great just there's a perfect amount of time like three days you know yeah and, anymore and i feel like it would have been uh, yeah hard. but we weren't like okay we're just like sitting around here waiting to get back to the kids because there have been times where like when we would leave ari and alethea and we would go maybe the same amount of time we would be like day three oh man i i'm yeah. like sick of being here i want to go see, like see the, i'm homesick or whatever yeah. but um if you guys want us to we can like unpack what a like vision planning kind of family mm -hmm. family vision planning trip looks like mm -hmm. um again, i feel like i've mentioned it before because yeah. we went on one in the beginning of the year in january and i got a lot of questions about that too so yeah mm -hmm. we should definitely do that yeah, we could do like a whole episode on like how do you structure it what are some things because i just wrote out i borrowed a lot from um jeremy Pryor and jeff bethke who i'll i'll mention later on in the episode too with a couple other questions but um, just really good at formatting intentionality around your your family team and your your spouse and kind of what are the values and the uh, direction that we want to go in our family. Mm -hmm. So it was really refreshing. Melana and I obviously spent time just having fun, hanging out, chilling by yeah. the pool, but we also mm -hmm. had like really good conversations and in depth like discussions on mm -hmm. what do we want our family to be and how do we want to like be an outpost for the gospel and all that. So. Yeah. 
yeah, that's kind of what we've been up to. Um, and yeah, it's it's been fun. Got a lot going on, but it's all good. Hmm. Let's see. Somebody asks, what are the correct steps to be saved or redeemed? Oh, that's a you question. Oh, no. I think I think you can answer. No, that's a you question. <laughs> well, it's actually, so it's very simple, but it's not simplistic. And what I mean is the way of salvation is a free gift of God and all can receive it. All you have to do is repent and believe. The Bible mm -hmm. says in Romans 10, 9, um, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And then I believe it's verse 14 says, for all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And what that looks like is not necessarily a prayer that you recite because a lot of people I think have been um, wrongfully told that they're saved just because they repeated a prayer that their pastor prayed. Mm -hmm. But it's it's truly a genuine repentance of the heart. Repentance is just a fancy word for a turning away of your sin to say, mm -hmm. not that I'm never sinning ever again, or, or if I do sin once, I need to be saved again. That's not what, mm -hmm. that's not what is talking about there. And you can even see this modeled in, uh, Peter's, I can't remember which, which, uh, chapter and verse specifically, but it's when Jesus is washing, um, the disciples feet and Peter says, you'll never wash my feet. And he says, well, Peter, if I can't wash your feet, then you can't, you know, be with me and like have a part in my kingdom. Mm -hmm. And then Peter says, well, in that case, Lord, wash, wash my whole body. You know, he's like, I want I want to be all in. Mm -hmm. And he says, no, you already had a bath. You just need your feet washed. And mm -hmm. kind of the idea that's, that's, I think conveyed there is we have been born again when you do what Romans 10, 9 says. It's just a belief of the heart. It's not works you do. It's not behavioral modification it's a heart change and only the holy spirit can do that yeah. to us and mm -hmm. so when we simply lay down our efforts of trying and our lay down our works and just say i submit and i surrender to you lord have your way in me i repent of my my life before you and i'm trusting you for my salvation and you believe that in your head and your heart you're you're saved and so then begins the journey of sanctification, which means you're being made righteous. You're having that foot washing a um, little, little bit every day. And so, yes, we're still going to stumble. Yes, we're still going to make, make uh, mistakes. Yes, we're still going to sin. We're going to still, be, we're still in the flesh. We're still in a body that's bound to this world. We're still, um, we're still humans, but there's a way out and that's through Jesus Christ and by the Holy Spirit em empowering us and indwelling us when we become saved, we now have the choice to say no to sin, whereas before we were, what the Bible says, slaves to sin. So you're either a slave to sin or you're a slave to Christ. Mm -hmm. And when you have the ability to say no to sin, that's you obeying the Holy Spirit. Because um, the Bible says, you know, all of our good works are like filthy rags compared to God's righteousness. So this is a really hard concept. I, I'm sorry to like go on a rant about this, but I think it's important because something I really wrestled with when I was uh, younger in my faith was, well, how is it that so many upright kind of moral or righteous people are, are they're living a really good life. They're really decent. They're helping people. They, you know, do everything on the outside looks good, but they just, they don't believe that Jesus is the son of God and they haven't wow. confessed, you know, him as Lord. Yes. And so I, I wrestled with that for a long time because I'm like, I know Christians that act like they don't know the Lord. And it's not so much a judgment as it is just an observation. And I, even in my own life at times where I'm like, I'm not acting like Christ right now. Mm. And the Holy Spirit will convict me, thank God, and cause me to, you know, turn from that and to change. But there's times where I look at Christians, I'm like, they're not, I know this person's a believer, or they claim to be a believer, and I, I believe that, but they're not really always acting like it. And then you have these people over here who don't believe that Jesus is who he said, or sometimes don't even believe Jesus existed if they're really that preposterous, even though most atheists and all of secular history, and you know, I digress, it's it's bonkers to me that people still in 2023 don't think that Jesus was an actual historical figure, you know, and um, you're, you're definitely in the fringe minority in that case. But you look at these people and you're like, well, how is it that God says, you know, I never knew you to these people that are look good and look moral and look upright 
and don't do bad things, or so it seems. They have these people over here who are almost, seems like they're abusing God's grace to sin and to kind of live a lifestyle that looks very similar to before. And when I started understanding that the whole idea of salvation is not behavior modification, because you can be very moral and not redeemed. It's always it's all about redemption, not behavior modification. So the behavior comes, and that's what sanctification is, and that's what the Holy Spirit does in us. When we get saved, we immediately have the Holy Spirit dwell inside of us. We become the temple of God. We don't go to a temple anymore. We take the temple with us. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit comes to indwell in our body and to change our will, to change our heart, to change our desires, and to change all these things that once desired sin, once desired wickedness, now we desire the righteousness of God and the good things that God has planned for us that we may walk in them. Mm -hmm. So I say all that because it's easy if you're looking at, you know, looking at things through a, a worldly lens, like, oh, this person seems to be doing this, or this person seems to not be doing these things, and you kind of get confused, but then you say, wait a second, salvation is not about your your works. It's actually the lack of works, if that makes sense. It's it's a laying down and a surrendering of your work to say, I can't save myself, and no amount of good I do can ever cancel out the debt of of sin. And so... I need Jesus and I need to just trust him and, and lay down my efforts of trying. So that was probably way more than, than you asked for, but that's essentially the, the step. So it's redemption, then righteousness, not righteousness first and then redemption. So you don't get your act together and clean yourself up first. You lay down that effort and you ask God to clean. You say, Lord, cleanse me. I, I'm a guilty, dirty, filthy sinner, and I need your grace to to wash over me and to cover me in your righteousness, and he will. So it's very simple, but not simplistic because it has profound implications. Anything to add? No. I think you covered everything and more. Okay. As I unfortunately tend to do sometimes, but um, here's an interesting question. What can we do or say when our mother-in-law belittles us for our for being a newly saved Christian or are still newly in our walk with Christ. Hmm. We haven't dealt with that um, personally, but I have a few ideas. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Um, oh, wait, you're, and you're I on this podcast do, too? And I want to do more rapid fire because we only sure. answered three questions in 17 minutes. So Sure, um, go for it. I would say first to pray for her because that is obviously the enemy trying to do something. He's trying to cause division, trying to put sh doubt and shame in your head, doubt and shame in her head. Like he's obviously trying to do something. So the biggest thing I think that you need to do is take it to the Lord and pray about that um, before saying something because I feel like you're kind of pinned in a corner in the situation and I'm so sorry that you are because it kind of gives you nowhere to really turn to because it's like you can say something and like not quote unquote correct but you can allow her and like let her know like that that how early you are in your walk with the lord like i don't know the relevance that that might have in your life right now unless you're like acting like a baby christian but that at that point it's like mm -hmm. I, I don't find that that would be the case um and so I find that the, that the, this kind of, the, the bringing of that topic has no relevance. And so I would just pray for her and her heart um, and maybe even pray that the Lord reveal to you what she might be struggling with or what insecurities you might be bringing out in her. And maybe this is just one thing that she can say or do to be like, oh, well, I've been a Christian for blah, blah, blah years, you know, mm -hmm. um, pray for her. Yeah, because clearly the enemy is trying to put strife in between that relationship that can be so beautiful yeah that's well said two quick thoughts one um paul tells timothy don't let anyone look down on you because of your youth mm -hmm. but in all things set an example for the believers exactly. i think that means more than just um your age youth but it could also be your youth in the in the mm -hmm. faith too mm -hmm. so don't let people look down on you especially when you are walking in mm -hmm. in that newness of life yeah no matter how long it's been and the second thing would be um, if that's your mother-in-law, I would highly suggest you confide in your husband and say, yeah. um, look, this is how I feel your mom treating me. And mm -hmm. um, maybe I'm over exaggerating or maybe I'm overreacting, but mm -hmm. chances are you're not. If you take something like you kind of seem like it was very specified in how you said it because mm -hmm. of my new new walk with the Lord. So mm -hmm. I think uh, having him address his mom 
is probably better because if you cross those lines, yeah. now your spouse is unfairly caught in the middle and mm -hmm. it, it just never ends well. And so. you and your husband are one now. So any situation that should, that's how it should be approached because yeah. I think it could, I feel like we should do a whole like in-law type episode. Cause I think With it's our parents? <laughs> no. Let's get ready no. to roll. We're going to bring out like the WWE <laughs> ring and it's just like. No. Um, <laughs> Just because I think this is something that a lot of people struggle with. I remember we struggled a lot with that when we first got married because we were so young. And yeah. so I think boundaries were overstepped so easily because I think Jordan and I were both naive and we just thought we were young. So it's like, yeah, sure. Overstep that giant boundary that we set, yeah. which was not OK. So, yeah, you live and you learn, but approach husband and you you behind yeah for sure hey guys wanted to take a quick break to thank today's sponsor relief band and if you're like milana who unfortunately suffers from migraines or say you've been driving with a friend and all of a sudden they say hold on you gotta stop the car and pull over i'm about to lose my lunch then you need to try relief band it is the number one fda approved anti-nausea wristband that has been clinically proven to quickly relieve and effectively prevent nausea and vomiting associated with things like motion sickness anxiety, migraines, hangovers, morning sickness, chemotherapy, and so much more. Uh, I'm actually wearing mine right now, and it's really sleek. I like this comfortable silicon band it's got, and you just plug it in, and best thing is it's completely safe and side effect free and drug free, so you don't have to take any medication or anything like that when you start experiencing some of these symptoms. Plus, Relief Band both treats and prevents nausea, so you can help stop nausea from becoming a problem in the first place. It's a must-have for every road trip. I actually just got back from fishing the other day with my old man and there's a couple guys with us and uh, it was pretty choppy out there and one guy started getting a little bit, you know, seasick and I thought, man, I should have brought my relief band for him to try, but uh, I'll remember for next time. So if you've always had a flashlight on hand for a blackout or a first aid kit on hand for emergencies, then you need a relief band for those unexpected nausea moments. Right now, we've got an exclusive offer just for ads for me and my house listeners. If you go to reliefband.com, and use promo code MYHOUSE, you will receive 20% off plus free shipping. So head to R-E-L-I-E-F-B-A-N-D.com and use our promo code MYHOUSE for 20% off plus free shipping. This is not a question, but this girl says, I'm 37 weeks pregnant with my first and I'm mm. very anxious for my birth. Mm. Encourage her, please. Yes, your body was made to do this. Um, you won't be the last person to give birth and you're not the first to give birth. I think for me, that was something I really had to tell myself. Mm -hmm. And um, in the Christian hypnobirthing app, one thing that is so beautiful that she says that truly to me was like, felt so empowering is like women all around the world right now are giving birth with you. And so it made you feel like less alone and like less like, oh, I'm the only one going through this right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it made it so beautiful to show like, it's one of the steps that needs to happen in order for life to come into the world. And I think if you see it as like a beautiful experience and a truly like honoring thing that you get to do, it really changes things of it being like a scary unknown. I mean, it's still unknown and it can still be scary. Like it can still be all those two things can like coexist. Um, but I think for me reminding myself that it's, it is beautiful and it's such a, gift to be able to carry life and like have this go through i think changed a lot yeah sorry i don't mean to keep like adding to you but there's one thing i thought of that i think would be really encouraging mm -hmm. it's actually something that jocko willink shared okay, and you're probably like this guy. probably like how the heck is jordan gonna tie in jocko willink <laughs> with me giving birth to my first kid well i saw this clip on youtube it was a little shorts of him addressing i think it was like a 10th mountain division group um army guys and he says like the kind of idea of his talk is well what if it sucks or like mm -hmm. what if it it's really bad and what he says is when you go through um trying situations and, and trials and tribulations the higher the suck factor the more um i don't he didn't put it this way but this is kind of me paraphrasing the higher the suck factor the, the worse it is um the deeper those bonds mm. uh are forged and and mm -hmm. reinforced so like you go through basic training with a bunch of people. Yeah, that sucks, you know? So you kind of build a level of camaraderie and trust and kind of shared experience there. Then you go through like a special operations course with people like that's weeding out more and that sucks even more. Then you go in combat with people and that sucks a lot. And then you, you know, so it's like thing you, God forbid, lose brothers in combat that were in your, your squad or whatever. And it's like now with those guys who are left, like you guys have that shared, you know, so 
the higher the suck factor or the worse things are if the you're with people outcome, like, it, like it builds that bond more so like when you're talking about women all around the world experiencing this labor mm-hmm. pain mm-hmm. or you with your child or you with your spouse like yeah. obviously i'm not feeling the pain you are right unfortunately but i can see like wow god created the woman's body to do some amazing things and yeah. oh last little thing i think educating yourself on like what is literally happening like why the muscles contract which way they're contracting mm-hmm. what needs to happen the way that the baby needs to turn because for me i kept visualizing that instead of being like wow every contraction that comes this is really freaking painful it was like no literally every contraction is like pushing her like was pushing evangeline lower and lower because i feel like that late that hard that was a really yeah it was a lot for that so i think if your husband can like push on your hips too oh, the counter depending pressure. on like where you are in your labor process sometimes yeah, that it's was harder so than helpful. other times but if you can like kind of stand behind you and press inwards on your mm-hmm. hips mm-hmm. that told like melana said that really helped it did so. it sure did but yeah we'll be uh praying for you and excited share some pictures of yes. baby when he or she arrives do great yeah um do you and jordan have an online marriage course we can partake in well, i don't and i don't feel qualified to do that not marriage per se but we do have some stuff coming up that's a little bit more um can i use the term like insider or or Sm- like more exclusive access we will be having some fun stuff coming to you guys yes online soon. that's that's something just a little tease a little hint hint what are some en- uh hobbies that we enjoy together <laughs> i wouldn't say it's a hobby what <laughs> having sex <laughs> <laughs> that's just the first thing that comes to mind who's the who's what the 12 year old boy in the head here I you or like me duh is that not too obvious i feel like that's something we like to do um i wouldn't say that's a hobby i don't know that we like have hobbies together because like i feel like for jor and i in our marriage just the way that we are both wired we need our own alone time to do our hobbies because some, i have found that if i try to make one of my hobbies a hobby that i do with jordan it no longer feels like my own hobby and because i'm either working or with the kids or with him it, there was a point where i didn't feel like i was an individual or like a person of my own mm-hmm. and um because sometimes i feel like my kids like to enjoy the hobbies that i like to do or like they like to make sourdough with me or like, they tend to do and participate in a lot of like my me time mm-hmm. and so like one thing that came to mind was like when i embroider like i'm not gonna have jordan and i embroider together mm-hmm. but jordan's has hobbies i really don't care to do either so i wouldn't say that we have any hobbies that we do together yeah. maybe more so the time that we spend together we love to travel together we love to eat food together um we love to just like sit together yeah. um oh, there was one that i was just gonna say oh shows we'll like go through seasons where we like shows and like watching them together when we won't watch them unless we were together but i've also been turned off to that because there was a statistic that came out that said like 80% of couples, the only one-on-one time that they get together is when they're watching a show. So I was like, ew, I don't want to be that. So we've been more mindful of like... Yeah, maybe we're just like, the minorities and that, that we don't really have like we shared also don't hobbies. Have a, we don't have a TV but, in our room either. So I think that helps with that. But yeah. yeah, I'd say just like maybe watching Blacklist together. or Yeah. Which is like the only show that we watch in The Chosen. But I was trying to think back to when like before we had kids and stuff. I mean, we'd go on walks a ton. Yeah, like with walk the, dogs. the dogs, miles, and have other stuff like that. I but think those hobbies can include the kids, though, because there'll be things that we'll do together, and the kids are just kind of like mm-hmm. running around us. Yeah, I mean, when we talk about, it's not so, so much a hobby as it is more of like a rhythm. But mm-hmm. like our Shabbat dinners have been great, something yes. we very much look forward to. Yeah, and but that's like, like a family thing. But it's still yeah. like Jordan and I enjoy serving and like enjoy doing that side by side. Yeah, so maybe we're we're the minority in that, where that we don't have like shared hobbies. Or maybe you're watching this and you're like, oh, I thought I was the only one who doesn't really have like a special thing I'm with like my really spouse. I'm like really curious but... to know what habit you could have with your spouse outside of sex. I mean, puzzles. Like we tried that. Didn't you know, really going work. to a like a pottery making class or like i don't know we're just stuff. wired differently so that like th- yeah. yeah all right next question <laughs> this one this one's a little more serious um it says tmi but how do you handle a situation where your boyfriend watches porn regularly 
Mm. I was actually just watching and listening to a podcast by Lisa. Um, oh, what's it called? Lisa Terkurst? I think, yeah. It's called... Um, While you're looking that up, just a couple... Therapy and Theology. It's cool. Oh, wow, that's quick. She's on there. Well, because I literally was just... <laughs> she's on there, and then she has her licensed therapist, and then the... Um, Jim Cress, who is the director of theology of Proverbs 31 ministry. Mm. So she has like a therapist and a theologist and she's on there and they're both men. So she gets to pick their brain on this. But I was just listening to a couple of her episodes, but she had just done one on pornography and um, it was more so your spouse. But I feel like the patterns that your boyfriend has before marriage will continue into marriage. Like there's literally 100%. nothing that will change from the day after you get married like unless there's like a s something that happens or that he does um what was even the question what does she like, do how or do you handle a situation where your boyfriend Ugh. watches porn regularly is he a christian because i feel like if if he's not then the request to have him not is gonna sound very out there just because the way that the world is now like there was even a statistic that came out that with the within men of the church and pastors, that is like, like over fifty percent. Like, like are that. you kidding? That yeah. is astronomically high. But in we can link this podcast down below because one of the guys who was talking had struggled with pornography in his marriage. And um I think he was he said he was sober for X amount of years, but he struggled with it in the beginning of their marriage and then it's been a long time in their marriage that he hasn't. But he kind of walks through because I think sometimes for women it's super helpful for us to kind of hear what is going through their mind because sometimes it's like just stop watching it and it's like well it's not that simple especially if it's an addiction and it seems like it is if it's a daily occurrence um because not only is it like an instant satisf satisfaction and gratification but then um the it's it's literally an addiction like heroin like it mm -hmm. truly is and the research that's come out of this is like you can't really refute it anymore. Like there's no good that comes out of that. Um, and if you plan on marrying him, this is something that you need to stop now or that he needs to stop now. Um, mm. And so I would seek counsel in the church, like approach him, let him like come with one, come with several. And then after that, then you got to go. Like I, this is a really serious subject that people need to take more seriously because it can really destroy everyone around him you know like um there's even there's been studies from people who aren't christian like secular accounts who like someone stopped watching porn and like within 30 days they launched a business they did this they did that like their productivity like went they through solved the world hunger no there's like it, there's been so many studies and so many people who have changed that pattern um so yeah i would seek out counsel at the church first speak to him first see if like he even acknowledges that that's a problem um yeah and uh, then go from there assuming that you guys are christians and like dating to Get potentially married. be married mm -hmm. uh, i would say first off just be in prayer for him so like mm -hmm. all the time you know how to pray for him now right mm -hmm. second i would say um it's a little bit harder as a as a boyfriend and girlfriend because you're not married yet but like mm -hmm. There's things you yeah. can do as husband and wife where you're like, okay, um, here's, so I'll, I'll say this and then I'll go back and kind of qualify it. Uh, like you have, you and your spouse have desires, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. Sexual desires and sexual needs. And so mm -hmm. you both are the fulfillment of each other's sexual needs yeah. and exclusively your but outside of that, that's just lust. So yeah. And I was even watching, um, it was a round table of, I think it's Dennis Prager, Jordan Peterson, and like a, a few other Bible scholars and like professors and stuff. Basically a lot of quote unquote wise guys who have a lot of like academic knowledge and, and somewhat authorities on particular subjects. And they, this issue of um, pornography came up and Dennis Prager was like, oh, I think like I tell people like porn can be used for good in your marriage. And like, I'm like, everyone's like looking around him at the table. Like, uh, is he for real? You know? And he's, he like doubles down on it even when he's called to the mat and absolutely like obliterated on it. He's like doubles down. And he's like, I'm like, dude, you just got to know when to like say, yeah, I was wrong. Or like you, your opinion supersedes mine on this, you know? So anyways, but I sell that because, you can love your spouse with a hundred percent of the capacity to love a person. Like I only have eyes for Milena and she's my wife. She's the fulfillment, whatever 
no kids, three kids, 50 years from now, like Melaine is my standard of beauty and sexual fulfillment. But I would, I would be lying to you if I said temptation doesn't stalk me at times, you know, I think that's just part of our human nature and probably same thing with Milena. And so you make war on your flesh. You have accountability of Mm -hmm. brothers and sisters that you trust that you can go to and say, Hey, I need prayer right now. I need, I need help me to be strong or whatever. You know, you can confide in those people without fear of um, judgment or uh, any sort of backlash or gossip, you know, and things like that. Mm So Definitely having that group starting in your church church body to find mm-hmm. those people is is definitely going to uh, be the best start. Mm-hmm. But other than yeah, praying for him and confronting him about it, I'd if he shows no remorse, yeah, ask was, the Holy Spirit to convict him. That's right? what I was gonna say. I'd say like specifically pray for two things: one, that the Lord convict him, and two, that the Lord help you not become calloused and help your heart in this. Um, Because I would say it's probably a lot easier to deal with this issue now before you guys get married rather than get married. Because Mm -hmm. I think once you are married and are being intimate with one another and someone is watching porn while being intimate with you, I feel like there's a level of hurt and pain that like is just different, especially once you've vowed to become one flesh and like love one another. So I think there's like a it adds just like a deeper level. So I think just. Biting that thing now is the best thing to do. Yeah. Like when you say I do to your spouse, you say I don't to everyone else yeah. simultaneously. And so that Online, includes people on a screen. Because yeah. I think that's what Prager's, not to belittle it, but that was his, or belabor it, but that, that was, I, I do want to belittle it, but I, to, to not belabor it, um, I think that was his like thing was, oh, it's just a person on a screen. It's not it an actual. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, he's, because he's not, he's is not the saved same. is the problem. So he's, he's operating from like a, like a moral Jewish perspective, I guess, of what he deems as, you know, moral. So Hmm. just needs prayer. But yeah, that was, that was one I think we wanted to camp out a little bit on. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try to go quicker here. What is an unexpected marital issue that you didn't see coming? Gosh. Um, um, maybe we should have answered this question like six years ago because (laughs) I'm like trying to think. Um, we were married six years ago. Oh, you're right. Almost six years ago. <laughs> I think um, little things aren't really little. Whereas, like, I found that sometimes, like, something that, like, well, maybe that's just my flesh speaking, but sometimes, like, our arguments would come of, like, really the stupidest things. And um, that was kind of unexpected. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the having to, like, stay in love factor of, like, you're not you're always going to be like rose rose colored glasses on right with like yeah. you're different i'm different and we'll continually be a different and so i think one thing i didn't realize is like oh we like constantly have to be reevaluating each other and falling in love with each other again over and over again and wanting that desire and like wanting to be one mm. um because like even though you are one you don't always feel like it yeah, no, I think you hit the nail on the head. You said we have differences and the goal isn't to change the other person. It's to love them mm-hmm. even with their differences. And so be mm-hmm. different and unique persons as you're growing closer together towards the Lord. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. And like the prayers that I pray are like so different than I ever thought they would be. Yeah. You mature and you grow as a person. And yeah, I would, I would say the same for me. Exactly mm-hmm. what you said. What's the best way to start talking about Jesus or growing faith more in a relationship so i'm assuming if i understand this question right um you're in a relationship and you're wanting to introduce jesus more and have that like as a more recurring conversation piece um you're probably not going to like my answer but i'm going to say i I wish you wouldn't have picked this well i think it's a legitimate question that somebody has i mean if I feel like at this point in the in our history in the world, maybe it's, this is just me as a twenty eight year old, you know, boomer millennial, whatever. You're not speaking, even old though. I feel like it. Like life is too short. The world, like the world, is accelerating too fast. Like our society is at a point right now. Like you don't have time to date people just to date, or like casual hookup culture is like so dead now, and it's just mm-hmm. like so 
so life sucking, you know, like mm-hmm. there's, I can't see why, like I never got into it, but I at least at one point saw like, oh, that's probably could be fun for a while. But like at this point in my life, I'm like, I don't see why people waste their time. It's, yeah. it's so debilitating. But at, at any way, um, I would say let your life speak for itself. Like the way that you carry yourself, the way that you speak, the people you hang out with, the things that you do in your free time, let that speak for itself to the point where you don't really need to say like, I love you, Jesus. It's like, so yeah so evident in your life i think they're talking about in their relationship though well if you're with the person all the time like yeah but i'm i would say the part that they probably won't like is you probably shouldn't be dating someone who's not a believer if you are yourself um and i know it's hard because you already have like a romantic interest there which is hard to like navigate those feelings but the best thing barring that i would say the best thing you could do is be in prayer for them and Mm -hmm. be an example of the word like don't beat them over the head with the bible like come on we need to sit down and do a bible study if you really love me you're gonna do like don't be manipulative about it but also like have and don't have organic don't make them a project yeah you don't want a missionary date i did that with milano's horrible decision (laughs) (laughs) no it was was more like two more questions how is your mental health after having three kids back to back to back fine i think we're doing great (laughs) I think I learned a lot in my postpartum with Ari and how I handled that. And so I knew exactly what to do and what what not to do when it came with Evangeline and postpartum with Evangeline. And it was just night and day difference, you guys. Like mm. night and day. My mental health and my spiritual health and like my marriage. I was so like on guard. And I feel like Jordan and I were both hyper aware of things and just really aware of what can happen because truly like the after my postpartum depression was really hard and I feel like even now when I look at pictures I'm like I genuinely do not remember that like there are sometimes I like see pictures of Ari as a baby and I'm like why don't I remember this and I I feel like that's like my brain obviously like so I think Jordan and I were super super sensitive to that and super aware of like what to do what not to do and I would actually I've been wanting to do this but I'd love to do a podcast on this or a YouTube video on what I did different and the signs to look out for. Maybe we could do two parts because I think it's helpful to have Jordan on because he knew what to look forward to. And I remember even the first, remember the first couple of days that I'd like cry Mm -hmm. and you're like, honey, like we were already like trying, Jordan like knew what to look for. Um, Well, like obviously you're going to cry because like your hormones are literally all over the place. But I think there's, there was like a slight difference. And I think Jordan had learned that slight difference from previous experience. And so um, being aware, knowing like there's so much we will talk about. Yeah, I was being perfect. And then Melania would just (laughs) act up for no reason. And that's when I knew that she was going through. No, I'm I'm completely (laughs) kidding. Um, If anyone out there has got it figured out, please let me know because I'm still navigating like how do I be gracious but also like not like I want to be sensitive but you're also like okay you almost just have to like hold on to your hat and just ride it out because you're like sometimes Jordan's very um, much so the one who'd be like why are you crying and I'd be like I don't know because you genuinely sometimes do not know and it's just because your hormones are all over the place and you're super happy and then you're super sad and then you're super happy yeah so, so you just kind of ride it out and love them through it regardless <laughs> yeah. and um i don't want to only do one more question there's a couple good ones but we'll okay go. okay go 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 okay how's the forever home going great it's funny you ask us there's a lot happening mm-hmm. we're making great progress yeah and we are going to be sharing exclusively on Milena's newsletter mm-hmm all of the updates and yeah. that's not like a overhyping clickbaity type of thing literally mm-hmm. all you do is sign up through your email for it's melena's new- newsletter it's completely free we don't want anything from you it's not like you know we're going to spam you and all that it's monthly might go to bi-weekly at some or by by monthly at some point but mm-hmm. right now it's like low like no spam but we're going to yeah. do all we'll of like the updates. behind the scenes mm-hmm. deets like we're going to take yeah. you to our cabinet meetings to our countertops we're going to show you like parts of the build process and mm-hmm. it's just going to be like a fun kind of exclusive look for all the newsletter subscribers just as a thank you for being subscribed mm-hmm. and so if you're not already subscribed check the link below we'll mm-hmm. include melena's newsletter sign up mm-hmm. and that way you don't miss out and yeah last month fun. i already shared like what our property looked like um so yeah yeah it's literally just a big open field people want to see like <laughs> The project you know i know i know 
the project. But after that, what's the next one? Okay. Do you have any weekly routines for managing home cleanliness as a couple? Home cleanse, like cleaning your house? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we clean all day long. <laughs> <laughs> all day, every day, baby. It's not weekly. If it was weekly, y'all, it would take me 24 hours. Um, yeah, there's definitely like habits and rhythms that we have in our house. Like our laundry's on a schedule. Our dishwasher's on a schedule. Like the times that we clean up and stuff is like on a schedule. I feel like it's a unspoken thing in our house that like you don't, if you make a mess, you clean the mess. Or like with the exception of dinner, like whoever makes dinner, <laughs> if I make dinner, Jordan cleans it. If he makes dinner, I clean it. Um, so kind of just setting up the expectations of like what, who's going to be doing what, like Jordan does the trash. I don't touch no trash. <laughs> um, he's a box fairy. I'm not a box fairy. Wait, you gotta explain the box fairy. The box fairy is the person that I when they're she doesn't even know when I no when I get cardboard, I just literally <laughs> open these. She gets a package doors. like an Amazon package or something, and then she takes out whatever's in there and just flings the box into <laughs> no, the I literally into the I void open, of the garage. I open the garage door and I drop kick that thing. And my in. home gym setup is in the garage. So like my buddy will come over and we'll work out. And you have like and I open the door to like three <laughs> boxes sitting there. I'm like So he's the box fairy. He's the one that breaks down. Because I ask him like in, where do the recycles. boxes end up, honey? Does the, the box, box fairy, fairy come and take him away? The box fairy. So I'll tell yeah, you. like I guess we, we vacuum so frequently that it's not like I only vacuum like once a week. Like we vacuum multiple times a day. So, yeah, I guess just what was the question? What's it was like, the, how do you maintain cleanliness? Oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to do more videos on this because it's been like a thing that I've started to realize. Especially that the spring. Systems, it's like spring cleaning time right now. Yeah. Well, that. Yeah. Spring cleaning. Gotta play to the trends, it's a you know. whole nother level of excitement. But um, there's definitely been systems that we've had in place that I think genuinely work and cut the workload by half just by the little tricks that yeah, we share do. some of those hacks with people because they want to know. Uh, okay, two more. Is there any way I can meet y'all? Yeah, we yeah, will be we're... at the XO. Oh. Oh yeah, you can. Oh, I'm just thinking out loud. Like I know for sure we'll be at the XO in Michigan, um, in Grand Rapids. Yeah, you you can tell them about like. Wait, aren't there other opportunities that we have coming up? We want to do more meet and greets. Yeah. Now that like They're things just are hard to navigate and like figure out locations. I've done like random ones. I don't know if you guys remember when I did one in Nashville two years ago. I think it was. Mm -hmm. Um, but EXO, like when we went to EXO in Texas, we met so many of February. you guys. Yeah. Yeah, in Houston. So many of y'all showed up from Houston. But that that's great. like the next like public thing that I know that we'll be at will be EXO at the end of the year. Yeah, let us know if you guys want us like to set up some meet and greets. We literally will just fly around yeah, and like meet you oh, guys. I was going to say, especially in Michigan. <laughs> especially in Michigan, <laughs> well, we can, we can but not exclusively it. in Michigan. Yeah. So if you want us to come out to where you guys are, just let us know. Mm -hmm. We'll do it. We'll mm -hmm. set it up. But yeah, we would love to meet you guys. We love hanging out and talking, I like seeing a face and not just like an ugly camera. We want to yeah. see like y'all's faces. I know. But yeah, that's that's exciting. I love doing that kind of stuff. So does Milena. Okay, we'll end with this one. What do you do when your husband doesn't want to go to church anymore? Probably find a new church. Honestly, like mm -hmm. that's my first. Maybe it's not the only or the right answer, but that's my first. I didn't even think gut reaction. That. Um. A lot of churches we find right now are kind of trying to play the safe game with everything. They're not speaking out on issues that God's word is very clear about. They're not speaking out on um, cultural trials or even personal things that people wrestle with. And yeah. Like, why won't the church talk about pornography? Yeah. Or just normalizing things that just to kind of try to play the safe route. And what I've... This is... This is Wait, a, what is the question? This is a... What do you do? Yeah, what do you, what what should I do? Mm. But when you ride the My fence for pray. so long, your butt you you get like you're a pain in the butt, I guess you could say. I just I just made that up. But like you can't just sit on the fence. You have to choose a side. Jesus says, "They on the side of truth will listen to me." Mm. There's sides here, people. There's sides did I, in Did I ever share this? I saw it a while back. But um, there was this guy who had a dream and he's like explaining it to his friend and he's like, yeah, like I was 
stuck in between heaven and hell and there i was like on the fence like i was literally there was a fence hell was on one side heaven was on the other side and i was just sitting on the fence hmm. and someone comes up to me and they're like well which one are you gonna do he's like well i definitely ain't with satan well i'm definitely not with god but i'm definitely not with satan and satan comes up and he goes no you're with me the fence is on my side like i i own the fence uh, too and i was like the fence and over oh yeah. he owns a fence too yeah there's there's so, a lot of truth in that. I guess I would say pray. I feel like Yeah, I mean it, I it depends. I don't to belittle that, but like truly there's so much power in prayer and maybe help the Lord help is it the church you're going to? Is it him wrestling with his faith? Have that conversation. I feel like oftentimes we just need to have the conversation. We have so many like vanilla bubblegum like Christian church Christian churches using that term loosely right now that like yeah people don't want to take a stand so they try to appeal to everyone and then they appeal to no one and as a result and so i would say i th without knowing the full context here my gut is telling me like probably to do find a new church, church. like mm -hmm. it's probably too comfortable or, or ask too him, cozy just, again, or have the conversation ask him yeah. do you not like our church are you having a hard time with your faith like is there something, something he's battling internally yeah is there not? something is yeah. there something that you can help him with is there something that you guys can do together like try to figure out what is preventing um and then as a wife it's like your job to go to bat and pray and get on those yeah is he not help. feeling connected is there like not a men's group or like i don't know a good group of fellowship mm -hmm. that he can is partake there church in hurt? yeah there's more to the picture yeah but i would say like find a church that you know, might have some hot takes as long as it's biblical, mm -hmm. right? Like you, you won't, you, you go to a, like a Paul Washer church or a John MacArthur mm -hmm. church, like you're getting, you're getting the truth, you know, you're getting biblical understanding. And even if you don't agree with a hundred percent of what they say, like you're going to be rocked and shaken to the core and convicted. And mm -hmm. I think we're missing that a lot in our churches today is that conviction aspect because we're just yeah. watering down our <laughs> sermons and trying to cater to everyone. So, mm -hmm. all right, I'll get off my soapbox now. You got any last words, honey? No, that was a long Q&A. We wanted to do a little longer episode just to catch you guys up and yeah. feel like, you know, make up for the last four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. So we're so glad to be back. Thank you guys for joining us. If you made it this far, we love you. Um, we love you regardless, but you won't know that we said we love you unless you already watched to this point. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll stop now. We'll see you guys Melina's next Monday. giving me the look. Bye. <laughs>